Yo, welcome to the K Says Sports Show, and I'm your host, Kane Bradfield. And y'all know my slogan, the fame is free, but the grind costs, baby. Yo, what's up, everybody? Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Kane Said. And y'all know who I am, Kane Bradfield. And y'all know my slogan, the fame is free, but the grind costs, baby. Listen, man, I got some special guests in the house, and we go back, baby. How y'all doing? Good, big dog. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look, man, Kobe, let people know who you are, baby. Hey, I'm Kerry Cofield from LaGrange, Georgia. Okay, okay. You know, I've been around here all my life. Yes, sir. Uh, my background is uh, I was in manufacturing for 32 years. Okay. But uh, my passion has always been football. Mm. I was born, like I said, I was born in Red here, and I came up on Daniel Street area on, on the east side. East side. East side. Okay, okay, okay. A lot okay. of street, a lot of side lock football. Yeah. You know, we play in the yard, play everywhere around in the neighborhood, you know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, But uh, I spent 37 years as a youth football coach. Wow. For Troop That's County. Nice. Uh, parks and recreation. Yeah, yeah. Seen a lot of players come. Through. Yeah, we got the real gold in the house, yeah, baby. Yeah, we uh, seen Marty Carter, mm -hmm. John Johnson, mm -hmm. um, Bruce Thornton. Yeah, Terry Governor. Yeah, yeah, him. We, yeah. We, we, we yeah. Man, man, we def. I'm telling you, man, we definitely gonna talk about that crew because yeah. those were some guys who left for you know who left for Staple yeah. here, here mm -hmm. in Lagrange, yeah. though. Yeah. I dig that. So how about you, Big Dog? Uh, my name is Edwin Jones, better known as Coach Jones in the area. I'm a Louisiana native, graduated from Southern University, and moved to Georgia. Been a, a retired educator currently. Uh, taught for 33 years. Spent the majority of my career in the Manchester area. Okay. Retiring from Mountain View Elementary School. Mm -hmm. uh, coached at Manchester High School. Got a chance, opportunity to go all the way to the state championship, <laughs> and yeah. even coached against this man. Right? <laughs> I remember against yeah. her yeah. County High School. Yeah. yeah, but it was my my joy is teaching. Okay, I love teaching. You know, like I said, I did thirty three years, and I've also worked at uh, Twin Cedars. Currently, okay. still at Twin Cedars. Where I work with youth with sports. Okay, perfect, man. Perfect, man. So, guys, so listen, but first of all, thank y'all again for, right. you know, for, for blessing Kane said and being here. So, listen, man, man, you guys got longevity in, in, in dealing with athletics. Like I said, you went 37 years. Cole, you got 30 plus years dealing with, dealing with athletics, man. So, um, one by one, you know what I mean? Whoever wanted can grab it. Where did the love come from, from sports? Mine. Mine just come at a young age. You know, I've always enjoyed playing. I didn't just play one sport. I yeah. played them all. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, growing up with uh, brothers, two older brothers, you know, we were always in the yard. And we. I came from a community. If you, if you say we lived in the country. Yeah. We, we weren't in the city area. We was in the country area, but had so many great athletes right. in the community. Right. right. So right. when you went and played football, basketball, or whatever, you were playing against some of the best in the city. Mm. So, you know, and if you wanted to play with these guys, you had to work at it. You got to go. So I, I I, believe, you know, I play different sports, but I believe my greatest attribute was my drive mm. to want to win. Okay. Not that I was the best shooter in basketball. Okay. But if I played against someone, they knew it's I wanted show time. to win. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. That's, that's, you know, just like I said, it just comes from that drive and wanting to be the best that be I can the best. be. And that's important. Coach, how about you, Coach? Well, I'm a sort of like Coach Jones. Um, I come up through the area where with no computers. Mm. And, um, you know, like nowadays, they got all kind of gadgets and things they can do. Can right. Go in there and play by themselves virtually. If yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. I came to the area where virtual was playing by yourself in the yard. <laughs> right. I had an older brother, and one highlight was I got a brother that's older, and he was six foot six. Wow. And I always had to compete against him when I got to growing, you know, to play with him in the yard, you mm. know, when he could, you know, because was, there was a little gap between us. But yeah. we played neighborhood to neighborhood, you know, football, <laughs> football season, baseball, it was baseball season, basketball, it yeah. was basketball. Yeah. Whatever season it was, 
Y'all you know, are in it. We was in it. So it was a passion. Okay. And, um, okay. you know, it, it was just something we, you know, we, I wanted to do. And um, and I wanted to be the best I could be at it. Right. Uh, you know, my, 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 my background, like I say, is I was a quarterback. Okay. At, at LaGrange High School, you know. Okay. I was the first African-American that really? started. Okay. Uh, people, See, we got history in the house, people, man. People, people thought I was the first African-American quarterback. I wasn't. I was the first one that started. Mm. It was a couple of guys before me, but um, I actually, you know, won, won the starting role. But so, he gave you the keys to that thing, though. So um, that was a challenge for me, right? You know, at that at that era, yeah, it was small challenge. Both um, it wasn't physical challenge because you know I was used to that, but uh, I guess so uh, the atmosphere, mm. you know, the things you know you had to go through. Yeah, but, you gotta uh, jump some little, yeah. But it's better, man. Okay, but, uh, okay. But it's still there. Right. Oh, definitely. It, it, it yeah, definitely it's still there. Okay. It, it still there. I'll just add, big dog, I know that's something we're gonna touch bases on, but, you know, going back to that community aspect. Okay. I know today's youth have the rec departments and all of that, mm -hmm. but I believe it was just something about that community. Come on, man. That community yeah. aspect of competing against those right. guys in your community. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, a lot of times, people knew of you right before you before you got, got to school. Got to school, yes. Mm -hmm. They knew who you were, yes, from mm -hmm. your community bill because they, you know, mm -hmm. they knew that guy before you, and then some that guy coming along. Mm -hmm. So that community aspect, you know, even with our kids today, even though we have direct departments, you know, I don't know. I doubt if we ever get back to that's something that really. Yeah, so 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 mm -hmm. no, 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 let me ask you this, and I have my answer. What do you think happened to that community involvement like that where you go outside and you're playing? What do you think happened behind that? Well, you know, with the inclusion thing, you know, when, you know, at one time we were separated by race and okay. all of that, you know, so back then we had to do it within our communities, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, as things progressed, I guess, you know, not that, like I said, there are positives. Okay. There's definitely positive to being a part of a, a you know, participating in a rec department. You get to play people from different areas and right. all of that. Right. But I just think you were groomed in your community to be the best that you can be. Mm. Yeah. And, and so no, I, I dig that. But man, yeah. I'm, I'm tell I'm and y'all tell me if y'all agree with me. And I'm for him. Don't get me wrong, I'm for him. Now I think travel sports yes. has taken away that community. You know, yeah. going out. Don't get me wrong, but that's why you got guys like me who have a training facility yes, where they can come to to see, get that type of stuff in. But, you know, I mean, kids really don't have time, to be honest, to go out there and, and play in the yard with their buddies or go down the street and play anymore no because they're traveling ball now. Yeah. Again, but that's the era we're in. So either you're going to ride with the there era go. or, or get left by the era. You, you know well, what I mean? So I really think that's the. Well, okay, one thing, uh, you know, to hit on what Coach Jones said, I'm going to kind of piggyback yeah. on it. You know, it was that era we came through. But another thing is um, the leadership. Mm. You know, we didn't pass it on right. Mm. You know, you know, I know I coached youth football 37 years, but how do you think I learned how to do that? Because I had idols that I looked at too. People that guy, I remember guys, we ride on back a pickup truck all the way to the park, playing baseball. Mm. You know, uh, that was fun, but we didn't know it at the time. But, right, right. But we had mentors. Yes. Mm. Yes. He can relate to that. Yes. You, okay. you had a guy get off of wood and he pick us up. They even go play baseball or uh, basketball, whatever you, you want to play, you know. Mm. And we, I think we lost that. Yes. You know, because everybody want their son or their daughter to be good. You know, right. I'm going to coach mine. Yes, I'm going right. to coach mine. Right. You know, that's it. Right. You know, right. I, I guess that's one thing I saw over my 37 years. I saw the evolution of, I used to practice at Granger Park, where, where the um, baseball field is. Right okay. I can remember when I first started coaching, boys would walk to practice. You didn't have to pick them up and take them home. They was committed. But over the years, it got, you got to pick them up. You go pick them up, you got to blow. They might come out, they right. might not. Right. Okay, then after that, the parents get in. My son don't want to go today, you know. So, you know, it's, mm. it's a lot of stuff. Mm. I don't know if you can say something changed. I don't think a whole lot changed. It's just a, so, so is it more evolution or is it more just... Um, people got selfish. Well, you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, like, yeah, I well, mean, well, you know, the, the, world changed, you know, the Bible says you get weaker and wiser. So I'm, yeah. I'm okay with that. You know, like when I played football, 
I went two yards and piles of guff, but I practiced where well, you got to hit them in the mouth. Mm. And, you know, they hit two, you got to hit them back. Right. So that kind of them drift out because concussions, you know. Oh, my son got a headache, guy. He can't go. You know, one, one thing, you know, over the years, you know, I taught my boys, and Coach probably did the same thing. And you, when you play football, it's a contact sport. And I always tell my parents, the second day of every practice, your, your child is going to be hurt. He might hurt his finger. He may hurt something. But it's a difference between being hurt and being injured. It's different now. So, you, you know, most coaches don't know that because they want to coach their own kid. Right. They kind of forget about the rest, you know. Coach, I'm hurt. You got to see. You got to check that out. Mm. Well, going back with you, you know, and talking about that community base, I'm just going to touch base okay. on, on uh, how, in a way, some kids may be left behind. Okay. When, when we were doing that community base, you know, in every community is that guy who may be the best athlete in the whole community. Okay. But when you go, when we talk about the progress with rec departments, nine times out of ten, that kid is not going to even play. Mm. When it comes down to him having to travel to get from here to there, Can't but do it. when it was in that community, sure do the it. boys were going to make certain he was there. That's right. true. You know, we were going to make certain – Yes, hey, sir. man, what, what are you doing? We going, we going down here Right, play. right, right, right. You come with us. You know, you know you can play. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, that yeah. was a part of it. Mm. You know, I'm always going to ride behind you because what you said is what yeah, I believe. Right, yeah, you right, see what I'm saying? Right. So, uh, you take you th- a prime example, and I'm not, I don't have a problem either way. You take baseball now. Okay. I look at, um, you know, they try to say, why are all black kids not playing baseball? It's not that they can't play. Oh, it's, it's open. Right. right. But you got a lot of things with that baseball now. You got this traveling baseball that's expensive. You know, I know some kids go all the way to Florida for a weekend. They'll go to Arizona for the weekend and play. But it kind of overlapped football because they had that foul baseball. And if you don't participate in foul baseball, which is no problem because, you know, you're going to get better. I agree with that. And most of them want to play football too. So I, I don't know how to fix that. But, um, you know, I, I truly believe that baseball is, 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 is the overlapping part well, of it. Well, well you got to think, too, you know, you know so when it comes to, you know, you know our culture in, in baseball, you know, I don't think our household talk about baseball. I'm going to be honest. Like, you know what I'm saying? In my household, it was, all we taught was football and basketball because that's what I played. That's right. You see what I'm saying? I so I think that – Conversation get left out of mm-hmm. our culture. culture. You know what I mean, yeah, I mean simply because I agree. You know, I mean, we don't have the history in it. Well, let me touch base, right. big dog. Uh, I grew up, like I said, in Louisiana, and we had the Negro League. Okay. Mm-hmm. Where the guy, the men in my community, when I was a little boy, every Sunday mm. we walked to the field. That's they right. played games every Sunday. Yeah, every Sunday. Mm-hmm. And man, I saw some of the legends. I. I I got an opportunity to, oh, to watch an a older gentleman. His name was Black Diamond. He was a pitcher. They say he played in, in the majors. But this guy was like 60 years old striking out guy. Wow. But that 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 don't happen anymore. Nah. When you had these uh, small lead of black players, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of those guys played pro ball, came back and played in these leagues. Right. So it was big in my community. Okay. I know I've heard they had one here in LaGrange as oh, well. Oh, yeah. There's so, a couple of them. But, but like he said, you know, in with the rec departments, which are good for some, yeah. and for some, they get left out right. because of money or mm. because of travel. Yeah. True. The, the community True. base, you didn't have to do all of that. Mm. All you had to do is want to play. Yeah. And it, it didn't come down to money. Mm-hmm. It came down to do you want to play this game or not? Right. Now, if you wanted to play, you were going to be pushed to be the best you could be. That's right. I go back to what you were saying. We had a, a gentleman in our community named Percy Smith. He used to work for a lumber company. At 5 o'clock, he'd come through that street be blowing. That's right. Mm-hmm. And he was going to go to the end of the street, and then mm-hmm. he'd come back. Mm-hmm. By the time he come back, me and my brothers was on the side of that road, jumping in the back of the mm-hmm. truck. So, like, like you know, going back to what we were saying, that community thing gave you that opportunity. Now, I had a, I was raised in a, with a single parent. Okay. My mom didn't care nothing about sports. Right. She had to work to provide for the family. That's yeah. right. But she didn't have anything. She didn't get, have any problem with me and my brothers playing sports as long as we made the grades. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. You know, but it was those other gentlemen like mm -hmm. Percy Smith mm -hmm. that gave us an opportunity the to other develop. Stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. I, I tell you, I went home a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And I went to see him. Really? And, and man, you know, just gave him a give and just, just told him how much I appreciate it. You appreciate it. that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, could I go back what, what Otis said earlier. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Kira said earlier that it's about it's about mentors. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Growing up with that. Yeah. But, but again, like I said, but now, now I think the mentors are coming through the travel sports mm -hmm. and the other sports. Like I said, it's no longer blowing the horn no more. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, you know what I mean? So I think it's tough because it's tough. Um, cause everybody, I mean, everybody want a team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want a team. But but I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna jump what I was saying earlier about the whole baseball deal. And so uh I, I, mean, I was talking to this guy, man, and he's the director of minority, uh I hope I'm saying this right, man. A minority baseball association. Okay. I hope I'm saying that right. Mm -hmm. But it is it's out of Tuskegee. Well, he's out of Tuskegee. Mm -hmm. He's also a head coach for Tuskegee baseball. Yeah. And uh he and I was talking, man. So they developed a a system to help minorities to start playing baseball. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause and, and he was telling me, he said, Kane, what the deal is, uh, you know, we just don't really get exposed to baseball. You, That's all it you is. know, so we get exposure later because you're fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you don't get exposed to it, you know, early enough because again, mm -hmm. the typical household, the typical household is a football or basketball player. Yeah. Or you got yeah. or, or you say you got a mom who don't care about none of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. know what I mean? So you don't get the opportunity to um to play baseball. But I wish mm -hmm. that I mean there was a way that we could get exposed more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To this game of baseball. There's got to be some brainstorming. You yeah. Know, and have, yeah. Take that, look into that, you know, getting them while they're young. Mm -hmm. You know, to help them develop that love for the game when mm -hmm. they're young. So, yep. not that you're trying to push them one way or the other, but I believe the more you develop skills at a young age, the yes, more sir. likely you are to go in that direction. Yes, sir. Well, yes, can, sir. Well, can, you know, one thing is safety. Okay. You know, and I hate, I hate to keep going back, but, you know, you can't let your kid walk to a Baseball right. practice now, you know. Right. I mean, yeah, the game it, don't change a little bit. The game, don't, yeah. it's just yeah. a lot of stuff, you know. Yeah. So it's not necessarily, you know, it's just hard. It's hard. It's just hard, it's hard. and um, you know, I wish I could, you know, do what I used to, but I, you know, I do what I can. Right. But um, you know, it's just it's just hard. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. There's so right. much stuff going on. And I think going to make uh, baseball is the one sport where I think you can't start late. You can't start late. You can't start you can't, late. You can start late you get, maybe in football. Sure you can start late in basketball. Yeah, sure right. But you don't want to start late. You can't start late in baseball. Late in baseball. The hand I call that something different than baseball. You'll be behind But, but I'm going to tell you what it is, though. I think it's the – I'm going to tell you, man. Again, I did not play baseball. Mm -hmm. I played softball in, in college. Like, a, you know, in, what do you call it? Yeah, Intramural, yeah. I played that. But that wasn't fearful. And so since I got the facility, I started messing around with yeah. the uh, yeah. pitching machine. Yeah. Man. It freaked me out because yeah. the balls are coming at you. So now you're yeah, right. Yeah. If you started late, the that's, fear of that ball. That's that's what people don't understand. They think it's a black and white thing. It's not a black and white thing. It's what you got to do for preparation. What Jones just said. Yeah. If you play, if you're a real good football player, you probably it's gonna be tough to play baseball because of ball. And those kids be getting pitching instruction. They be yeah. getting hitting instruction. Yeah. And it don't be it be at a high level. Yeah. So. It's not a black and white thing. It's a experience. It's a spare yeah, thing. Here. You can't go to Spears. baseball at a fifteen year old right. and think you're gonna catch up. You're right. way behind. Right. Right. Let me tell you a personal experience. Um, I would go to New Orleans during the summertime. I lived with my mom in Plaquemine, which is across the river from Baton Rouge in the Baton Rouge area. But in the summer, we would go spend uh, the summer with my grandparents in New Orleans. Okay. So I go down and I get on this baseball team. Mm -hmm. Made the All Star. In a predominantly black area. Yeah, know? yeah. So in the All Star, we go play against uh -oh. predominantly white. Right. <laughs> you right. know, he ought to make the All Star. Right. Yeah. Right. Man, I go up there to bat. The first pitch, I ain't never seen a curveball. You <laughs> about to do the, the, the ball at me? I dropped the bat and ran. <laughs> hey, hey, Joe. You ain't never spared that. My granddad hey. said, "Boy, get back in there." <laughs> hey, hey, Joe. I had to say, we went to Columbus. They bought pitch for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Joe, Joe. We hadn't seen nothing like knuckle curve. Yeah. And we were yeah. big hitters. Yeah. They had me back clean up, man. We were ready. We in Columbus, Georgia. Yeah. Man, that joke was thought that knuckle curve, I was on one knee. Yeah. <laughs> like, what I, the swear, I, was a, I hadn't seen it before. But man, I never did it. You know, I haven't seen it before. I, I, I'm telling you, man. So so you're right, man. The experience, the experience of it. Experience. Is, 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 but but man, that's why, again, I always say, parents all ask me, 
what age should kids start developing? I said early as possible. Because, man, I like in training. Like, you yeah. know, so what I do, training to, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, learn a language or, or, or learning something. The earlier you jump on it, you know what I mean, the earlier your body gets it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Earlier the muscle memory catches up. Yeah. So that's why, like I said, you know, baseball players are, I mean, it's different. Yes. It's, it's definitely it. different. So, so, guys, let me ask y'all. So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump a little bit. Right. So, right now, man, you know what I'm saying? Now, again, you guys don't spend years of, of coaching, being around. In, in you guys' opinion, what has changed with sports right now from, from when you guys came? What had changed? Money. Money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Money. Money. Money, Money don't change. The NIL, NIL changed the game. Mm. You know, because, for instance, say, for instance, uh, I'm going to use myself. If I was in this area, okay. I don't like to call names, so I'm going to use me. Okay. And that way I can say what I want to. Right, 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 right. So I believe, you know, coming through now, my mom, I was a single parent too. My, pa- my father passed you know, at an early age for me. If somebody had to walk up to me and say, I give you, Three hundred thousand dollars to come here, and I want to go to B school. This is my favorite school, yeah. but C crew come over here with three hundred thousand. What you gonna do? Right. You know, it that changed the game. Right. It doesn't. It's not matter what you like. Then it's, it's, it's so. So what got to happen with it, Coach? Ooh. Uh, well, you with with the NIL. Yeah, you're yeah. referring to that. Yeah. Uh, I really think Big Dog. Was Kane. The coaches, I'm, I'm referring to these big time college coaches. If they would have spoke up on behalf of players beforehand, mm. we wouldn't have got here. Mm. But we've gotten, they've gotten where they are now. And it's going to have to be some type of rules put in place. What's, what, what, let me say this though. I think they were speaking up, but they were speaking up in private. What I mean by that is, they were speaking up by giving brown bags. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they were speaking up to the right people. Well, saying, well, that, that's what I'm, you, you, that's you know, what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm saying if, if, if these big coaches, Nick Saban, uh, any of the big coaches right, right. at the big schools, would have gotten together just like they go to these coaches' meeting and speak on everything and say, look, you know, everybody been known there's a need to uh, support to the do players. something. Yeah, yeah. And I think it should have been done on a, a, a balanced scale. Mm-hmm. Where forget your, your your level of stardom, just give everybody a you know if they would have just gave them some type of stipend, you know when I was in college I had a work study, right? You know I had a work study I got paid to do that work study, mm-hmm. you know so there was funds available if you were able to pay a regular student money I'm with you now. to do a little work I'm with you now uh, you could have just you know the work that these guys put in to prepare to go make you millions. But coach, you gotta think though, coach. When, when man, man, when you're on scholarship, according to them, you couldn't make money. I understand, well, I understand that, but I'm saying if they could have, oh, okay, okay, like for when it they is. could yeah. have changed the rules for to sure. support these kids for sure with the amount of time they had to put in. Yeah, you know, they, yeah, they said, well, we pay for your education through that scholarship and books and all of that. But right. hey, if if you got to spend the rest of your day preparing to go play a game. Where's the money coming Where's from? Money come from? And what if your parents like mine? Man, I went to school from, I was blessed to get on a school bus right. and go to Southern University. They dropped me off. I got up really? 6 o'clock in the morning. It drove to me just like I was going to high school. We got to that school at 7.15. But you know what time I got back home? Right. 6 o'clock that evening. Mm. The school bus would pick us. Anybody who rode that bus, we'd back, get back on that bus like 4.30, 5 o'clock. So I really? didn't get back home to 6. Right. So, but like I said, my mom was seeing parents. She most times she gave me two or three dollars a day. Okay, and I had to make that work. Yeah, make that work. You know, yeah, do what you had to do on that. Mm-hmm. Coach King, uh, you, NIL is great. Okay, so when I'm talking, it's not that I don't think it's a good thing. I think I'm for it two hundred percent. Okay, but if you look at baseball, basketball, they have guidelines. If you come out of high school and go professional, you go, you can be drafted, you can be traded, you can do anything legally. And same thing with basketball. It's contracts. But football, I think they started and they skipped all the middle steps and went straight to the money. Yeah. And then they look back like, oh, oh. we got to do something. Well, yeah, of course we got to do something. But what that what they got to do is I don't know. I'm like everybody else. Good, 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 good. Well, let, let, let's go back to what you, your initial okay. question was without the NIL. emphasis on the NIL. Okay. 
I think the biggest difference between how sports was back when I played or uh, Brother Copeland here is, yeah. one, there are far more people involved in the athlete for the wrong reason. Mm. You know, you know, even like in most cases, the, the, the recruits right now, they got other people. I'm, I'm not talking about their coaches. Okay, mm. no. You know, okay. especially in, in, in basketball and even now in football from what you look at. Right. You got pushes trying to push these kids to one school or another. That was even before the NIA. True that. Mm. I'm talking about within the last five to ten years back. Back when I was in school, it was about what you did on that field. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and which you in, in a lot of I'm cases, you know. you know, like I said, you had some parents who wouldn't really into that, but they were glad to see their kids get scholarships. Right. But, you know, it was more about what you did on that field. Now, you know, what you got coaches offering kids scholarships in, in middle school. Right. Right. You know, I hear it's a got, race now. Yeah, I hear we got a kid in, in the Manchester area. That you know, big he, here, tight end, defensive end, yeah, big, big boy, yeah, guy, you know, they offered him, you know, so. But I'm saying, so is is that good for sports, or bad for sports to, to to offer a kid that early? I think uh, there are positives and negatives. You know, for for one kid, it may uh, impact him in a way that negatively, where he can't focus. To be the best that he can be because he already thinks he's gonna he's arrived. Mm. Where for another kid, it may be motivation to continue to work. I got so you. for everybody, it's different. I you got know, you. you can't put mm -hmm. every individual in the same box mm -hmm. and say it's, it's bad for him or say it's good for him. So I'm gonna ask y'all this though: Could y'all coach in this era? Well, of course I could, but um, it changed. See, that's the, that's At the, what level? Reg, middle school, high school, collegiate? All levels. All levels. No, no, I'm talking about as far as that, that you would say, hey, I could coach at this level in this era right now. I could coach in um, where, where, I, where I've always been, youth. I could okay. coach in high school. Yeah, uh, yeah. But you got to recognize that it's changed them. Um, for instance, I'll give you an example of some of the changes. You know, when me and Jones came through, my mom used to call it tussling, you know, fighting. But my mom used to call it tussling. That was no problem back in the day. Right. Me and Joan could tussle. We'd go back and record in 30 minutes and play mm -hmm. basketball, and right. it'd be over. Right. It's, that's it. But nowadays, it won't be it. Mm. So it's, it'll be tougher. You have to do things different now than okay. what you used to do. Personally, well, you know, when I coach, I don't believe your core values change okay. as no. an individual. Okay. That's just what well, I was. I'm with you. You know, I, I remember the year when I when I was coaching in Manchester. You know, my mom always stressed education, and my thing when when a young man came to me was sharing, or I would hear of him having an issue in the classroom. I I talked with him to that point. Right. You know, right. did I reach him all about it? No. But my values are my values as a high C thing to to do the best thing for a. Any kid that I work for, be it sports or just meeting a kid on the street, mm. I'm going to share with him what I think is going to help him to be the best individual he could be. Because remember, all high school stars don't wind up being, well, no, I ain't going to say all. The majority of high school stars don't wind up being pro athletes. That's true. That's, so that's true. The information that you provide that kid, that's remember, true. this is you're going to impact his life. In its totality, you know, it ain't just about that. You got to look at what the advice you got to give him. Got to be for something going to help him beyond that sport. Right. Mmm. Cause mm. see, cause see, I, I wanted that man. Cause you know, a lot of people I talked to, you know, what I'm saying who, who, who coached earlier, like, oh, I can do it now. You know, what I'm saying kids mm. are entitled. Kids and no, that. I can do it. But but to me, to me, man, I think the coach itself, like I said, said it could 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 of course they're there. Yeah. Of course, they're there. It's about can you, you know what I'm saying, demand and command a yeah. room still. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Can you demand and command an individual that's still? That's all it is. You, you, and nothing, the, the game hasn't changed. The game hasn't changed. Six rooms, and you still got to do it. But, uh, like, you know, the core, my core values wouldn't, wouldn't change because yeah. I truly believe in practice. You know, I believe if you don't practice 
and try to get better, you won't get better. Right. So that won't change regardless of what area. You know, right. If I go to coaching, back, go back to coaching today, you still got to come to practice. You got to come to practice, man. So, uh, you know, you can't just show up when you get ready and play. It won't, it won't happen on the my, yeah. not on the my watch. Yeah. Uh, so, I like you know, it. That's I like what, it. That, that won't change. Like, like you were saying, uh, with everything in life, comes a time where you got to have a level of flexibility. Yeah. You got to be willing to change with yeah, the time. You got to change. Yeah. You know, and I've, you know, listened to a little of some of the things that Nick Saban is saying, mm-hmm. and watching, you know, the SEC thing. Yeah. And that's what he's saying in a nutshell. Yes, so. That, that, that's changed. I believe, you know, I know everybody, and I believe he wanted, if not the best, one of the greatest coaches ever. Agreed. But he realized he's going to have to change. Yep. What he did a couple of years ago with his offense. Yeah. He realized he couldn't. Yeah, he's going to throw it around that now. Thing no more. Yep. So he, he went and got, he started spreading the ball around. You got to be winning the chain with time. Yeah. That's yeah. what I did. I yeah. went from um, physical to finesse. I'm going to tell you. At times, you got to do that you. now. Because, because, listen, man. No, don't get me wrong. At the end of the day, she got to run that ball. But maybe you look right now, the game of football, gotta, they throwing that ball. Gotta, they're throwing it. You better have like, like people are throwing it. And, 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 and I'm going to say this, too. Now, this is for you, you know what I'm saying, for your black quarterbacks, right? Man, you know what I'm saying, your black quarterback typically is known for their speed, mm-hmm. for their agility. I mean, for the athletic ability, right? Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it's still going to be can you throw that ball? Throw you that throw ball. It. Gotta you still got to throw that ball. Gotta you know what I'm saying? And, and, and so that's my, I'm telling you, man, that's my message to every quarterback or every aspiring quarterback who want to be a quarterback. Mm-hmm. You make him run, and that's great. But, bro, you got to be able to still throw that thing, Coach. Let's let, let put, let put some spec- Yeah, yeah. You got to be able to accurately throw. You got you to be accurate. I now. tell anyone. You got to be accurate. Everybody say this guy got an arm. <laughs> you throw it. Can you right. accurately throw yeah, it? Can you accurately throw that out? Can you find the windows? Yes. To hit that receiving when he's coming across that field. So, so let me freeze you that in, Coach. Okay, so, so yes, you got to be able to throw that thing accurate, right? Yeah. Now, as a black quarterback, typically they want a quarterback to be able to move and run. Yeah. Can you be, and Michael Vick said something, so watch it. Can you be that athletic quarterback and still be accurate? I believe that. I believe you can. So I'm going to tell Michael Vick said, Michael Vick said, you know, I mean, a lot of times people was on him about him being accurate. Yeah. He said, yeah, think about something. He said, man, if I'm done ran 30 yards, done ran 40 yards, done shook this person, done rolled this person, and you tell me to throw it out, yeah. I'm going to struggle with it because I'm tired. I believe mm-hmm. if you ran 30 yards, you should have been running anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you ran that far, you shouldn't be looking well, throw, you should have been yeah, going. Yeah. Right. But you see mm-hmm. what I'm saying, though? Yeah. But, but he would get an example of how, you know what I'm saying, he won, he won the most mm-hmm. accurate quarterback. He was just, yeah. They had him for his legs. I'm with you. But he even got time to throw. He said, I, honestly, I was fatigued because you, if you run, come back and throw, mm-hmm. like he said, and he started talking about Tom Brady. He said, that's why, first of all, Tom don't get touched. He said, Tom don't run. So Tom's arm is so legit because he don't do no i tell you what, that's what I like about Alabama quarterback. That kid, he has agility, but his, he looks to pass first. There we you go. Know, he uses it there we go, right as there. a last resort. There we go. You know, he, he's looking down that field and looking, trying to find the receivers mm-hmm. during those routes. And as Af- I'm just saying, African American right. quarterbacks, you can't get put in that situation where you are just looked at as a running quarterback. Because the first time your team is struggling, yes. that coach is looking for that guy that could pass and using you as a situational guy. So so my question is though, do you know what I mean? Do we get hurt in college? Because in college, high school and college, you already know what happened in high school to college. Yeah. The more athletic quarterback going to take off right. in high school and college. Now, does that hurt a player in the NFL? Yeah. You see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. But, like, like again, Lamar Jackson, mm-hmm. awesome, special talent. But I don't think he's a great passer. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, I think he understands that. He, this, he can get a job done. This is my thing about him. I think Lamar Jackson is developing each year. Right. And I think he's progressing on, on in a positive way. You know, he don't look to run all the time now. Now, what he is is a good short short pass. Right. He's that. He's not. He's not. Your tight ends. Don't look for him to throw that thing 50, 60 yards. Right. But he's a duck. He's going to hit them little crossing routes. Now he can do that, be, do it more consistently, but I 
think he's finding that balance. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. But so, so, but they come from again. He was known. For, for his feet. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. this is what I'm saying. Like, high school and college can hurt a athletic quarterback because mm-hmm. they want you to outrun yeah. everybody. They wanna, like you said, they want to they win the game. <laughs> they want to win the game. They want to win the game, win the game. Win the game man. So, Jill, yeah. Jill, like, Kane, um, I think it's a, it's a system thing, too, you know, because I think y'all hit it on the head when you say youth football, high school football, and college football. They really don't care what you do as long as you get it done. Mm. But once you hit the professional level, it's, it's a job. So, th- you know, they're going to be a little bit more specific. Yeah. So, um, but to be a dual threat is a challenge. Mm. Yeah. It's a challenge. It's a huge challenge because if you're just a pure pocket passer, then you're going to struggle with the rush. Yeah. You know, you better have a massive, good offensive line. Offensive line. Because if you don't, you're going to be successful. They're coming to get you. You know, you know, going back in the, at the pro level, yeah. you know, we all know all of these guys are great athletes. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. And your, right. your your window mm-hmm. of opportunity ain't that long. <laughs> so you back there in that pocket, you you better make quick decisions. Yes. Or if you selling the run all the time, you putting yourself in harm's way. Mm-hmm. Right. More likely, most of the time. I don't care how fast you are. Because it's going to be somebody going to, you, you may think, in college you, you knew. Mm-hmm. You were faster than what? Probably right. 70% right. of guys right. like that. That's, that's right. all it is. But in the NFL, that, that, that number, that, that number yeah, changes. Yeah, but it, 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 it goes down. Yeah. Okay, without calling names, you can take the best quarterback in the history of NFL, the best, and y'all know who that is. Put him on another team that don't have offensive line, I can assure you oh, yeah. things would change. Oh, yeah. It won't happen. He won't accept that. I mean, I mean, I was saying my Tom Brady now. Yeah, and me. Okay, okay. I'll let you yeah, call it. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah me, be. I think Tom Brady is the go to quarterback. Go to quarterback. I do. But some teams you put him but on. But man, true. That front line protects him. That front line protects him. Yeah. He, he don't, don't get touched. He don't get yeah. touched. I mean, because there's no way you can play into your forties. No. But you know who was just on to me on about the same level as Tom Brady, yeah. Joe Montana. He was just like him. They were just alike. Joe he was a little bit more mobile. Thing. Joe was a little bit more mobile. Yeah. 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 He, he was mobile. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't run. Joe yeah, but he, but he, he could get out of there when he, 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 he had to. To me, Joe, what what make them guys great to me is they make that throw when they just have to. Yeah. When you say, man, can we stop him? Right. They going to make the throw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 But I wonder, man, like, like, okay, okay. So I'm going to share for a minute. I want to talk about something. Okay. Brittany Griner. Okay. Oh, Lord. Brittany Griner, man. She's been locked up for. February the 27th, isn't it? Yeah. Somewhere it's around some, there. Something around somewhere there. around there. Yeah. Man, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about. First, I want to talk about um, women's sports. Okay. And male sport and for support. Right? Okay. I want to deal with that first when we tap into Brittany Griner. Yeah. Man, do you guys think that the female sports. Now, I'm going to talk in terms of basketball. That's the biggest one. Right? Do y'all think in the female sports they are getting the support they need as an organization? No, not, not at all. So, and, okay, go ahead, go, go. And I'm going to say this. I think female basketball is the purest form of yes, the sir. game. Yes, I sir. I mean, when you come talk about the team aspect of it, you know, man, those, the set and watch those women, the way they execute on offense. It's a pretty thing to watch. If you, if you look at basketball, right. like I look at it. Mm-hmm. Now, I love the NBA, but man, the NBA is just straight in entertainment. entertainment. And, and it's almost like, how can you look at NBA players and and go to young kids who you try to help develop fundamentals and say, learn from them? It's, man, it's it ain't much fundamentals right. with, in the NBA. It's all about and and I believe the NBA make their stars to right. a certain extent. <laughs> right. You know, I right. always tell people the star in the NBA is the guy who got the green light to shoot the ball. That's the star. Cause you know we always look at how many points he scored, but how many shots did he take to get those? Right. Right. You know, he got a green at, light. Did you look at his sh- shooting percentage? Right. You know, but he's the star because he's got the green light. So 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 I'm, I'm asking though. So do you? I mean, why? Like for example, we're talking about. Yeah, let's get back. No, 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 but 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 I'm 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 gonna tag on to that. So, like for example, okay, uh Curry's, he got the green light, he's that star. 
why doesn't the WNBA magnify their stars? Like, what's the holdup? Like, 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 okay, name, like right now, can you name five WNBA players? Oh, yeah, I I can name well, five. see, well, I, I probably the wrong person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you be in that stuff. Yeah. But, Coach, can you name no, five? No. You see what I'm saying? No. no. I feel you. So, so, like, a person who really don't follow basketball can name. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, well, I believe, you know, it goes way back to why, why has it taken this long to even have a professional lead for American, you know, right, here right. In, our, in, in our country. Right. You know, and then, like you said, the fact that their season has to be so short. Man. Why Why isn't theirs, would their season last maybe two, three months? I mean, it, it's, I don't know the exact duration, yeah, but it, it, it definitely, yeah. And and these ladies are really, they're not compensated nowhere near. Right, they're not going to hit on them. Yeah. Would, would men players get compensated, you know? I I really don't understand. But, but I'm going to tell you what I think it is. In, in business, it's all about, it's all about yeah, revenue. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I just don't think, and again, I don't know if it's the market behind it, but for some reason, the WNBA is not producing the revenue to get paid more. Right. You know what I'm saying? For well, one, for one, for one, then two, you know what I'm saying? I don't think the sponsors are beating down their doors. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you know how sponsors are beating down the door yeah, to be you. at a, uh, you know what I'm saying? You go to NBA arena, you see stuff on the floor, like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, sponsors beat down to try to be yeah, part of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So something that the WNBA is not offering, maybe? I mean, I, I don't know. Well, I think if they're headed in the right direction after the NCAA tournament last year. You saw oh, yeah, that? by the weight room? By the weight room. So yeah. they making a conscious effort now. But like y'all said, they're not there. I did. So, no. But talking about um, basketball, you know, with um, the game, you know, what you said was the difference. Everybody can't shoot like Steph Curry from half coach. Right. He changed the game. He did. You know, everybody said Michael Jordan did this, LeBron did that, Kareem did. Everybody had things they changed. But what could Steve Steph Curry done did, he shooting from just by half coach. Yeah, he changed the game on Everybody that. can't do that. I don't no. care what you say. You can probably count them on your hands every year, somebody that can do that out of the whole United States. Yep. So he's not a good role model to look at for us how to do it because – Gonna have to come up so Oh yeah, he's yeah. special talent. Everybody can't shoot special. that phone. Well, I special. think I think another aspect of it, uh, man, mm -hmm. is when these ladies are playing, playing basketball during the summertime. Mm -hmm. They may have to change mm -hmm. the time of year mm -hmm. when their season goes on. And you know, I'm certain the issue is, do we want them playing during the time when the NCAA mm -hmm. right. is going Ooh, on? That's tough. The, you know, and mm -hmm. have that issue of. Will it make any money compared to going to that college state got something to do with it? It's the season. Man. You know, you're playing basketball during the summer. See, I ain't thinking about it like that, though. the rest of them, they, they're not playing basketball during the summer. Wow. See, I did not. But see, mm, it's going to be tough, though. Because you can't play in the fall because you're competing against football. Yeah. Well, you know, you think about uh, the pro football leagues wanting to compete against their NFL. Right. They made certain their season was going <laughs> right. on during the NFL right. season. Right. But is that the right thing to do? Mm. Or you take that chance and you go back and you put it during the time, during the season, and you let the chip fall where they may. Or you see what, you know. What? Cole, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you what it is. And you said it earlier. Entertainment. Yeah. Man, it, man, if you look at revenue or the fours, whatever, 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 Entertainers are the ones who are making the most money. People love to get entertained. Yeah. So some way, somehow, WNBA got to figure out. Again, it's perfect basketball. Like you said, fundamentals yeah, yeah, are A1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A1. But how mm. do you make that entertaining? Do you drop the gold, let them talk? Like people people want to come to men basketball because they flying around between their legs. You know what I mean? So, so you know what I mean? So I think that's one thing that, that, that that's making the NBA a lots of money because you got – Insane athletes. Yeah. Now, could you drop the goal, or is that like I'm saying? How could you bring more entertainment to it? Like, yeah. okay, let me back up a little more. Now, the, now the NCAA mm -hmm. girls, it's exciting. Yeah. Like, it's a cycle. For one, you got your college spirit going on, yeah. all the type of stuff. Yeah. But how can you duplicate that in WNBA? Because that's exciting. Like, mm -hmm. I watched the Final Four for the women. Mm -hmm. I'm watching that. Yeah, what big dog? Like, like I said, 
I really believe they're going to consider changing the time of year that they they, they do this league. Yeah. You know, they're going they're gonna to have to consider that, you know. But, and the bottom line, you're going to have to extend your season as well. I know, I know there's a lot of, you know, I right. know you're going against right. a lot of stuff, but. Right, hey, right, right. But right, just right, right. playing for these, this short period during the summer. Now, think about it. People think about vacation during the summer months. Yeah, yeah, they ain't y'all watching no basketball. You know? Boy, Cole, you you on the song. So Cole. it's Cole, you know. you might need to be GM big now. You might need to call somebody and say, "Hey, y'all, sit down. I got a fix for it." Yeah. So okay, now, so I tapped into that man to tap into the subject of, of, of Brittany Griner. Like you said, Coach, she she been locked up. We think since February. February. If that was a LeBron, Kevin Garnett, or Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, would it be a different situation right now? Personally, I don't think it would. Because I think the issue is beyond sports. It's mm-hmm. political. Here you know, and, and you're dealing with, with a country that is at odds with the U.S. right now. Anyway, no, really. Supporting. So mm-hmm. a lot of things that, that, that they're doing, I think she's kind of playing it well. Right. Mm-hmm. I right. think she, she's looking out for herself. Yeah. You know, I believe she realized, you know, I'm hoping and praying our government has an influence. Right. But I don't believe they really do. Mm. I believe she playing it right where she may not be held as long as she could be. Because you see, now they're talking about she has a, a doctor excuse. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, so, so she got the team that she playing with is trying to support her. Right. I think that's better than trying – I'm not saying I don't want our country to support it. If they can, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Do it now. Right. But I don't think we have as much an influence as the team she played. Mm. If they can help her, you know. Mm. She, al- a- she also got some inside help over there too. Yeah. She got got some people over in Russia t- uh, talking for. Her. Um. But I, I I think it'd be different if it was you know somebody else. But to a general point, yeah, I think it won't be any difference because right. we're. At, they're at war with the country that we're supporting. Wow. So, uh, you know, it's political. Wow. That's about all that is. I was kind of shocked when, when I, re- I read and heard that she had went on, even though I understood she was guilty. But, you know, she gave legal advice right. to go that route. To go that to, route. To, my, to, my, to plead yeah. guilty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because yeah. she got a prescription for it. Yeah. So uh-huh. that's what they're saying, plead yeah. guilty, because you were prescribed that. Right. Yeah. So, Hopefully it'll help a whole lot. I just more. hope all the eyes are dotted, T's across yeah. yeah. for her pleading. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, again, she got. I'm sure she got some advice from from the right people yeah. to tell her to, you know, go ahead and plead guilty. But I was shocked too. Yeah, yeah. I, I was definitely shocked when I when, when I saw that. So so guys, transfer portal. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, mean, I like to talk about the transfer portal. I like to talk about what it's doing to to college sports right now, and it's mm-hmm. changing the dynamics of recruiting. Yes, for sure. Now, give me you guys feedback on the transfer board. Um, personally, I think, once again, just like everything, big dog, they're positive. Yeah, and right, right. You know, right. the positive is you may be on a team. I'm going to throw my team out there, the LSU Tigers. Mm-hmm. You might be on a team where you're a wide receiver, like LSU had Jordan Jefferson. Yep. And you know that crew. Yep. Where you may be good enough to go play for somebody else. You know, you went there with the goals of playing. Mm. But, you know, you've been there a year, and you, you know, you see the guys you play alongside. Now, if you you got the opportunity to go somewhere and play, I say, yeah, mm. do it. But but I I hope a lot of these young men be smart and and don't move just to move. Right, right, because you're upset. It, because if, if if I have to wait just one year to come in and get that next spot, I'm staying at LSU. Most definitely. But, you know, if I'm moving just to move, in a lot of cases, you waiting on somebody else to see if they think you're worthy of, of a scholarship on their team. That's right. A lot of these kids getting stuck out there and can't, ain't not going anywhere. Mm. And I see a young man from LSU did that, wide receiver left. And that, that kid's still waiting on somebody to pick him up. See? And he got on the field a few times. Wow. You know, he wasn't starting, but he got on the field. Wow. You know? Wow. You, you about to say something, Coach? Yeah, I just want to say, <clears throat> talking about the portal, look at the wide receiver from Georgia that went to Alabama. Um, what's his name? Uh, anyway. Burton. 
No, Burton. Okay. He was a top receiver, just won a national championship, going to Alabama. What do you think he transferred for? I have an answer, but I just want to see what y'all think. I don't, I don't even know to be Personally, honest. he mm-hmm. thought with Alabama losing the receivers that they're losing, he think he can slide in there. Partly. I think and you're right, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking a little bit different. Yeah. That would add on to it. The reason I think he transferred is he looked at the quarterback situation I think that, that to happened. better myself in the draft. Because this boy going to lay it up there. He going to lay it up there, I agree, Alabama. I agree with that also. And, uh, now, 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 now yeah. I'm, not, I'm not down in Georgia quarterback because I, you know, you know, I had a lot of experience with quarterbacking. Georgia quarterback, I've been sitting around the last couple of weeks evaluating him to myself, looking at uh, reruns and mm-hmm. him. Everybody said, well, he shouldn't be the starter because, you know, he can't do that. He shouldn't be the starter because – and I was one of those people because I was looking at numbers. Yeah. You know, I have, right. uh, you ought to be this quarterback. Right. But if you look at it, and I know a lot of people are going to see this on TV and they're going to tell you you got to eat crow now, but um, he don't make mistakes. That's right. He knows the system. Can he knock the wall down with the ball? Absolutely not. Can he outrun anybody? He got speed. He can get out of there when he have to. Yeah. Watch him. Yeah. He, he can get out of there when he get out of there. Yeah. He's going to make a few mistakes along, but he ain't going to beat the team. Mm. So, and the Burton looked at that. Is you know he ain't gonna be able to throw me every time. This boy Alabama gonna lay it up there for. Him. Cause let me tell you what's the name. That, now he's in the NFL, but he said this. What's that receiver name that played for Green Bay? Uh, Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams going to he going to. He went to, he went to Oakland. Las, Las Vegas. So he went to yeah 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 yeah, yeah Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. He, he went to Las Vegas. And he said this. So they asked him, why'd you leave? Uh, mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers. He said, well, because Aaron finna leave. He be gone in a couple he years. He finna leave. Yeah, he, no, said, no. he said, and so I got to go. I'm in my prime. That's right. I got to go where somebody I, I know get that money. can throw that ball. Yeah. Well, That's all it is. It's not hitting mm-hmm. like Georgia. Right. Going, going right. And- my, been, my, my been with regards to uh, college, being a college quarterback mm-hmm. and being a pro quarterback, some of the best college quarterbacks have not gone on to be Great no, pro quarterback. No. But I say that to say this. You don't have to be have pro ability to be an outstanding college quarterback. No, I like that. Georgia. I like that. You know, you could you you could be a, a great manager of the team. Yeah. And look, Danny Werfel. Mm-hmm. All oh he did was at Florida. Yes. The winning they did. Win. Yes. You know, but all he do is win. you know, he didn't do nothing in he the NFL. NFL he, he could, uh-uh. You're right. If you go back and look and say college, you got to put him at one of the winning quarterbacks. Because he was he was gone. Yeah, he was gone. And, and what he do that ball? He wouldn't just just dunk it. So and, and so and so. And then come tell you, it has to do with processing too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can a quarterback process enough on that next level? Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because you got to process faster. That's like right. you said earlier. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got doggone quarterbacks gonna give you. One split second, get that ball off. Mm-hmm. Even get off. He picked pick the six yeah. to where in college, you might got three seconds. You know, mm-hmm. you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. Speed. For him to come out the back. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Come out the back pedal and break on the ball. Yeah. Uh, uh, in the fair cornerback going to break faster. So can you process enough to get that ball yeah. to him? Yeah. You know, yeah. so I think, Dan, like I said, Danny, man, um, he, he, he was one of, like I said, one of the top quarterbacks in, in college. Oh, no, man, like one of the top. One of the top. Mm. I honestly thought, he they was gonna have a better NFL career though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Can you know you talking about how you get better? Danny Werfel, you remember when you played football? As you come through little league, it was first string, second string, third yeah. string, yeah. high school first string. When you get to college, depth chart. Yep, it ain't no string. That depth chart. Everybody good. Who played like good that. at the time? Yeah. So and then you go to pro, you ain't got no depth chart. You got the best of the best. That's right. So That's same change from, Sunday. from step to step. Mm-hmm. So, and, and, and it comes down to also. You know, the system. Who drafted you? What system are they using? You yep. know, some NFL teams like to do dink and dunk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then some NFL team wants you to throw that thing down the yep. field. And if you can't do that, they don't you don't, know. Fit, their you don't fit that system. Man, speaking of system, tell you this, man. So mm-hmm. I was coming out of college. I was coming out of Savannah State, man. And uh, I'll have a super strong conversation with the Minnesota Vikings. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I was playing D-line and D-end. Mm-hmm. So, at the time I was coming out of college, man, they had John Randall. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. They had Beast. Ball, all them guys that were short yeah, and yeah, quick. Yeah. Y'all listen, man. And I was in strong conversation. Yeah. yeah, man, we're looking at maybe, you know, late round draft a free agent, you know what I mean? Because you fit what we do yeah, at D yeah, Lineman. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they do a lot of games. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. uh, slant, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Curran, whatever. I'm like, oh my God, yeah, yeah. Right before the draft, they fired the defense coordinator. Uh-huh. <laughs> he came in uh-huh. with another scheme. Yeah. He wanted six five, six six. Yeah. So yeah. they go back what he's saying. It's yeah. all up, and that changed everything for yeah. me. Yeah. So they ain't look yeah. at me no more. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they yeah. traded John Run to Seattle. Uh-huh. I don't know if y'all remember that. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? They, they traded. So 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 you're right. It's about that system, man. Yeah. So if you can find that right system, but 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 here's the scary thing about the the, the pro level. Um. But now, you know, they man, they normally draft according to that system, though. Yeah. Normally. Yeah. Normally they they will, you know. Yeah. But, but still, you get there, and there are things that they want to do that that they right. can't do, you know. Right, right, you see, right. You be like, dang, what happened to that guy? <laughs> right. Know? Yep. Yep. You know, and that could be any position. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you, know mm-hmm. you see guys they have all kind of speed, and you say, why didn't guy? You know, why are you not on somebody's team? Mm-hmm. But. He got speed, but can he run them routes? Can he run the route? You don't always want to run that fly. That's right. Can, yep. Can you know you went to a level? You may be a cornerback in high school. The college may not want you as cornerback. Yep. And that's what the kids don't understand. You, know you, gotta, you might got to go to doggone safety. Now. Yeah. You, know, you might go to safety. You may go to wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Wide receiver go to corner. Quarterback mm-hmm. go to slot receiver. Mm-hmm. They know what they're looking for out of you. When, I hope they talk that to you through the process, right. you know, to the players. I'm sure I know they do 100. percent Yeah. So you know, it's a lot of lot of um, things you have to look at. Right. Around I think around. sometimes you know, I think some kids who are so athletic that that they could go anywhere. Like I, I was just looking at a, a kid LSU uh, just recently got committed. They say he gonna play defensive end, outside linebacker. Mm-hmm. Again, look like all all pro tight end to me. See what I'm saying? You know, yeah, I, yeah. And, and bad as they need tight end, mm-hmm. I can see them telling him, Flip hey, man, we need yep. you a tight end. Well, wait, so, uh, uh, so I'm like what they did with, uh, you know, Jonathan Eccles, the kid yeah. that was a hurricane to transfer IMG. Mm-hmm. You know, he went as a defensive end, now he's a tight end. Yeah. But, again, he dead athletic to play either side yeah. of the ball. That's that fit. I'm going to tell y'all a kid right now. I know I'm an LSU fan. Give it to me, Coach. I need right. it. LSU got a, a kid. He, 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 he was considered the top linebacker, middle linebacker. But this guy was the best running back in Texas. This kid highlights. He could. I wouldn't be surprised if this boy played a uh, running back. Really? But they, they, they got him to play linebacker. Mm-hmm. I can't call his name right now, but, man, check the kid highlights out. So, so he committed to LSU? Yeah, he, he that now. Oh, okay, okay. And they say he looking like a man among boys. Really? As a true freshman. Wow. Mm-hmm. He just got there this summer because he didn't graduate. Right. right. But, man, you look at it. Now, you know if you running all over kids in Texas, too you're good. Because Texas is different now. You know he's good. Hey, can you, you know, they're talking about, you know, we talk about NIL, right? Yeah. Okay, um, a, lot of, a lot of the coaches this, this, this week, and I looked at the Big Ten last week, they're talking about competitive advantages. <laughs> <laughs> they want to equal. They know they want to make. Oh, equal to plan. Everybody want to win. So they like they right. see that nil. Hey, I'm going with the money. But 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 I'm saying how much how much money is it too much money for a kid coming out? Oh, 18, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I wouldn't say no. I don't, I would say I it ain't in, in in my amount. It won't be enough. You know, man. I just I'm thinking, man. Uh, if someone's gonna give me a million dollars, that's what I'm saying. I ain't gonna tell him I want it. I ain't yeah. gonna tell him I don't want it. I can see help my mama, you know, helping my family if you're thinking right. Yeah, I, I just, I just think I, I was listening at a, a, a talk show or whatever. But one aspect of it that people not looking at, I hope and pray you young men got some somebody, some guys who, who, who's helping from a standpoint of being prepared for those taxes. Ooh, yeah. they see, that's, the, that's the that's the guy. Sam gonna come a holiday That's the guy they ain't looking at. They looking at how much money I can get. The money is good. Yeah. But why you out there spending it? Yeah. But at the end when you gotta pay them taxes, yeah. you're hoping, you know, yeah. see, all they, they got people in place. That all they gotta come and play. Yeah. I like that. All they gotta come and play, because you ain't gonna see it this year, and you right. probably won't see it next yeah. year. But they gonna flip. You're gonna have your USC, watch now. Trojan's gonna come back. Texas AM should be there. I don't know. Yeah. Miami, Miami Hurricanes coming back. Um, Texas University. 
Cost that money. Cause Texas got that. Yeah, Texas got that. Now, I ain't gonna lie. Like Miami, man, I want Miami to come back. Yeah, you gotta have for the Miami. fact though. For I remember for football. Miami. I agree with you. Cool. Man, you remember that? I yeah, that era. I want Miami, Miami, Florida State. That'd be good for football. So, man, because that was, when you know, it was coming up, man, that was the, the program that you were like, oh, boy. Michael, Michael Herb and them. But man, but man. Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis. But how can, I, I tell you, like I say, I have I'm gonna respect Nick Saban as a great coach, but how could he use that term about competitive? That's what I'm saying. Teams? That's why, that's why I thought laughing. Nick, let somebody yeah. else, let, let Vanderbilt coach you <laughs> right, that thing. Right, man. right, right. Come on, don't you use no, that. No, not Nick. Not hey, Nick. If you if you if you want competitive advantage, then you are not play University of Louisiana Monroe then on your non schedule. But, but game. I understand in the context of what he's trying to say. Yeah. He was trying to say the state of Alabama don't have the money that he Texas. Said it. Texas he right. didn't say it. He didn't but try Nick, to say it. He said it. But Nick, come on, Nick. <laughs> right, right. You don't need no more advantage. I'm glad right. they don't have that kind of money in Alabama. What? Well, because well, because Nick, he, he probably looking to the future, but like, uh oh. Yeah, that was a couple you know what years. Saying, all the times I've been going to this um, championship, yeah. it changed a little bit. In about two years, you gonna see it. So, Cole, uh-huh. man, y'all know got to deal with it, man. Uh-huh. No, we got to deal with it. HBCU. Come on with it now. Let's deal with it now. I'm an HBCU guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to, to, to Savannah State. Southern University. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, Jackson uh, State. Yes, yeah, sir. So so what Coach Prime is doing right now is like unbelievable. unbelievable. Yeah. But can that scratch out through the whole HBCU? Well, that's what he's working on real hard. You know, you know Grambling got a... Uh, what name you coaching Minnesota? I mean, yeah, not Minnesota. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, her, uh, Hugh Jackson. Hugh Jackson. Got him from Cleveland. He's mm-hmm. the head coach down there. Tennessee State got uh, Eddie George. Mm-hmm. Uh, Florida M got, um, who they, they had a big time. Really? NFL black guy. So yeah. it, they're trying to spread it. Yeah. I think every time Deion gets some money, he's spreading it out to the conferences. Oh, so, you know, Pete Diddy gave him a million dollars the other night. I saw night. that. Yeah. And, um, and uh, somebody else gave him a couple of me, uh, uh, Michael Strahan. So, He's spreading it out, you know. Mm-hmm. And then you know he turned around and gave his salary. How about he, he gave half of his salary? You know, so it, gave a half of his yep. salary to finish out athletic. But I'm so happy to see that because yeah, yeah. back in the day, uh, Kane, that's what we that's what we grew up on. Yeah, I mean well, that's some good football. Well, you know, when I was a little boy, the thing for us was to get up Sunday morning and watch Grambling. Uh, yeah, sure. Come on, man! Now you know back then, LSU would have never played Grambling. Right. Uh-oh. Grambling had the best of the best. Right. You know, Beat them like a drone. They, they would have never played a Grambling back when I was a little boy because Grambling was loaded with NFL players. Mm-hmm. But hopefully, you know, I don't believe it would ever be to that point again where no. a, a HBCU would get a team that loaded with mm. – I, I hope it get that way. Right. But what Prime is doing is showing African-American kids – you can go to HBCU. You can be a four star right. and go play here and still have an opportunity to go to the league. Right. You know, That's right. All they and do. something else that I kind of noticed when I was at Southern, I graduated in 87. There were a lot of kids who would leave like a LSU and come transfer to Southern. It got to the point where they kind of stopped doing that. You know, instead of going to HBCU, they may go to McNeese. Okay. You know, they might go to the other school. I guess they felt like, that uh, swag had dropped off so much that they wouldn't get in the look. Get, yeah. And that, that's prime. That's what yep. he's been advocating that the NFL do more to support the ABC. That's right. So far as giving the players opportunity, you know, for, for, for the next level. Yeah. yeah, for the next level. But 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 again though, is it going back? We saying about the, you know about the women. Co, it takes well for anything. It, it takes revenue. Yeah. But revenue. I'm saying, can the other HBCUs create that type of revenue that Prime is producing? Well, it, it's going to take time. It's going to take yeah. time, man. You know, yeah. you ain't going to build it overnight. See, everybody wanted it now. How far are we away from another? There, there you go. There you go. How far are we away from another HBCU yeah. making the same type? Of, right. Don't get me wrong now. Prime is a, him himself is a, is a, is a. Draw. A draw anyway, right? Draw it anyway. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. so. How far we away man, from another? Because I remember, shouts out to Savannah State, man. But I remember my time at Savannah State, like everything wasn't peachy. Yeah. My uniform was not but now my uniform was dope. But our our uh our shoulder, uh, pad. shoulder pads and yeah, you know I mean stuff like that. It wasn't. Yeah. Well, my thing is, I think 
there are some other HBCUs who who can take that step. You know, I my university, Southern University. You know, I when I go back home, I go visit the campus. When I was there, the campus would the, the stadium wouldn't close then. Mm. Now, man, they didn't close the whole stadium. Mm. You know, you look. I know not on a scale of a Auburn University, but they have, it's, it's they have a beautiful facility. But what I'm saying is, what he's doing could help, like a Southern United, start getting these type of players. If they feel like they can go there and still get the shine and, you know, that exposure on television and stuff, because all of that got to come with some of this as well. Yep. You know? yep. That make a lot of sense on that. You know? But again, I think he, and, and people, it's crazy, y'all. So we had a conversation yesterday in here, and, uh, and uh, everybody was talking about. Prime, how long is Prime trying to do this? What's his end game? Is he trying to get to a power five? What you guys mm-hmm. think on that? I mean, you guys' input on that? Well, you know, his name had come up for Florida State one time, last year one time. And it didn't come again. And, think, uh, yeah. He, he kind of crushed that like he don't want to go. So, But, you know, you never can put the foot on that because he, he probably didn't want to. Step on nobody's toes. You think his sons are the reason why he's not leaving right now? Or you think he really trying to change HBCU? Well, you know, if if, if he leaves, the sons going to right, they're going with him. Right. So that, you know. Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, no, go. I'm good. Well, I, you know, regardless, you know, every man, you work. Right. You know, whatever job you get, you hoping you can move up. Move up. Right. So no one could knock him. That's right. If, that's if, right. if he did get another that's opportunity, right. Right. just like. Assistant coach at Alabama goes on to get a yeah. head coaching job. You yeah. couldn't knock it. That's not the uh, all you can do is thank him for what he did while awesome. he was there. Yeah. Yeah. But go, but man, but you know if he go, he'll catch a lot of flack behind him. Because yeah. he he talked about even the playing fields and you know what I mean. So I, this is what I think. I think he can coach for a while until his sons get out of school, yeah. and and probably to Travis uh, Hunter, Hunter leave, mm-hmm. but also. I think Prime going to get into a power position to where he can able to help all HBCUs. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what position that is. Mm-hmm. I think he'll get in a position where his voice is, like he, because like right now, mm-hmm. he got a whole lot of power at Jackson State. Mm-hmm. Whole lot of power. That day I saw him had the whole stadium playing church music, him dancing. Yeah. He not going to get that at Florida State. Yeah. He didn't got that much power. But I'm saying, I'm thinking one day, he's going to go, because like, I don't know what, if that, if that is a position. Mm-hmm. To where he can, from a politics situation or from a, I don't know, where he can help uh, dictate and drive what's going on with, H- with HBCU that's, sports in general or fair, schools in general. I think that's a fair assessment. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I support that. So, I mean, who knows? Who yeah. knows? Who well, knows? You know, one, yeah. thing, one thing that I believe, you know, I can support what you're saying is because Dion been at that highest level. Yeah. You know, your prime time. Yeah. Right? Your best cornerback probably ever come through. Mm-hmm. So he don't need the publicity for right. He he, he right. got that. He got all so that. He may be looking for something different in life. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you know you know he, he was changed. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. So, so, so guys, so listen, man. At, at, at the end of every show, man, I always give my guests to leave the listeners and the viewers something positive. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So take a few minutes, man. Think, and who will go first, man? Man, take a stab at it, man. Lead them something positive. Well. I- well, I say, uh, you know, I enjoy watching college, high school, and professional sports. You know, um, enjoy seeing individuals from this area, young yeah. men from this area, get yeah. an opportunity to play at the college level and just wish them the best. You know, um, the opportunity to play uh, on a, at a college or university is not given to many. Come on. And when you can make it there and get get on that field, it's special. Yes, sir. So I wish all the kids in this area and throughout other universities the best of luck. Yes, sir. In their, you know, in their drive. Yes, sir. Yeah, first of all, I enjoyed the conversation. And um, but one thing I like to leave with with people in this area. I know this is a sports talk show, which is a great thing. I'm glad you invited me. Yes, sir. But don't forget your academics. Mm-hmm. I know you say, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I want to get that money. You could get it. But that academic will give you leverage to do other things, you know, besides football, besides baseball, besides basketball. Try That's to right. get something on the side. That's right. 
Athletics can be a tool to get that. That's right. You know, if I'm a good basketball or football player, I can get a scholarship. But if I'm good enough to go to pro, probably not. But I can open me a gym like Kane. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And I can make money. Yes, sir. So, 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 but you got to have an education Most definitely. To, to be able to do that. Most definitely. Now, it, it was a college. Hope so. Trade school is a good one. Go, go, go take you something and, and get you a skill. Mm-hmm. Carpentry, brick mason, working on cars, whatever you like to do, have a passion for, go and try to be the best at it. Because it's less than one half a percent of boys that play football go to the next level. That's right. They have to go to work out in the field. And I'm That's not right. trying to discourage nobody, but I'm, I'm a realist. I've seen it happen. You know, guys will put the whole thing in football, and if something happened, boom, boom. They ain't got nothing to fall back on. That's true. Thank you, Kane, for inviting me. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Man, listen, I appreciate yes, y'all, man. Yes, I appreciate yes, y'all coming yes, here, yes, man. Yes, listen, man, y'all will be back, man. Like I said, especially as 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 the uh, you know high school season start coming on, mm-hmm. man. I'm gonna bring y'all back and you know, do a little more talking. Man. I appreciate y'all, man. Thank you, sir. I appreciate y'all. Thank listen, man. Thank y'all for tuning in. Y'all know what it is, baby. Zip them up.